Hallelujah, hallelujah. Calvary greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. We want to thank God uh, for such a wonderful night again. We are gathered together in the name of Jesus that is above every other name. And we thank God for what the servant of God is, is singing to us tonight, families, that no matter the weapons the enemy has purposed to assign against us, it shall never ever stand. We shall prevail in the name of Jesus Christ. And so tonight we welcome you all and we are at the Jesus feet and we pray that tonight we are going to catch up the word of God and we are going to be blessed. I believe by all my heart, in all my heart, there is a blessing for every one of us. So let us receive the word and I pray that God is going to enable us to be the doers of that word, not the listeners deceiving ourselves. So tonight let's join up together as we pray to bring the men of God in, in the spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Our Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, O oh God, in humility we bow before you this wonderful night that you have given us. We exalt you, we glorify you, for we know you are our God. We thank you, my Father, from the beginning to the end, Lord God, you never change, O oh mighty Father. Since from the beginning of the foundations of the earth, my Father, you have never ever changed, O oh God. And Father, we thank you because you chose us even before the foundations of the earth, my God. Tonight, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, we gather together in your name, Lord. We are trusting you for this service, Lord. We are praying, Jehovah, that we are going to do a new work. In our homes, in our families, in our individuals, in the name of Jesus. Excuse me. And so tonight, my Father, nothing can hinder your move in our midst, oh dear Lord. Lord, nothing, no weapon. Once again, we say, no weapon fashioned against the church, the body of Jesus Christ, shall ever, ever prosper, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we know, God, that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus, for we are not doing any, any battles by our own effort, my Father. We are relying on you by your spirit that you said, Lord Jesus. It is, expend, it is expedient for you that you may go to the Father, and that the Holy Spirit may come unto us, Lord. Tonight we thank you, Holy Spirit, we thank you for your coming. We thank you because tonight this is your night. We thank you for your sermon that is you have set aside even tonight to speak to us your word. Father, let that word bring a change in our lives. Let that word, my God, bring, oh my Father God, a difference in our lives and we are living in these last days, my Father. Lord, we have always said that Jesus, you are your name is above every other name king of glory and we refuse we reject every assignments of the enemy of our lives of our children my father even over your servants of our nation of kenya even as we remember the saba saba oh god tonight my father we speak your peace in this nation, my Father. We speak your breakthroughs in this nation, my Father. Even as we pray for our leaders, my Father, we pray God Almighty, you shall open up their eyes. They shall know that Jehovah, you are the only true God that has been created us, my Father. And that is to be worshipped, oh my Father. No any other God that Kenya shall bow unto, oh my Father. For we shall bow unto you, oh God, the only creator of the heavens and the earth, oh dear Father. Lord, have your way in our nation, my Father. Have your way, King of glory, oh Lord. We celebrate the 7-7, seven, seven, my Father, tonight, oh dear Lord. And we speak the blood of Jesus that bringeth peace, oh my God, upon us, my Father. That the blood of Jesus is speaking great things of our nation, my Father. We speak that the blood of Jesus, Lord, is speaking great things, oh God, of East Africa, my Father. Lord, remember you 
Uganda. Remember Tanzania, my father. Remember God that these are the nations you have chosen for an appointed time, my father. Thank you, oh God, for the entire continent of Africa, my father. This is the continent, my God. You have made to be a blessing to the nations of the world, my father. And so tonight we bring on our leaders in the nation or in the, in the African continent, my father. We rebuke, we destroy every ancestral spirits, my father, that come to enter even the move of the gospel in this continent in the name of Jesus Christ, my father. Lord, tonight we pray, God, that you love your way in this continent, my father. We pray that the light of God is shining over this African continent in the name of Jesus Christ, my father. Tonight we thank you. We thank you for all other nations, my father. We thank you for our sons, our daughters, our dear ones, our loved ones, my father, who are outside there, my father. We bring them to you, Father, speaking your peace to reign in their hearts in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, the Lord Jehovah, you shall see them even in these times of the COVID-19, my father. In the name of Jesus, we pray, my Father, it is only you, King of glory, who is exalted, my Father, and this weapon of the enemy that is released from the pit of hell, my God. Father, we shall not be afraid. We shall not be shaken. In the name of Jesus, Father, for you have said, oh my God, that you have not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind, my Father. Tonight, we decree the soundness of mind. Tonight, we decree the soundness of our minds and the power and the love of God to penetrate right in our lives, oh God. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We exhort you. Lord, we thank you for our families. I speak your blessing that we are, uh, we are blessed of you. We are forgiven of the Father by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, oh God. Father, we thank you for our Papa. We thank you, Lord, that you have prepared him tonight, oh God, in a special way, Lord. Father, use his lips, my God. Give him the utterance of your word, my Father. Cause him to pierce through the ears that have been closed up, my Father. Cause him to pierce through the eyes, our spiritual eyes that have been closed by whatever issues we are passing through that we're going to see your power we're going to see your greatness oh God in the midst of every crisis oh God Father be glorified and magnified in, in our lives in this midst oh God and in Jesus name we prayed and we believed and the family said amen 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 welcome all of us on board God bless you we love you thank you Jesus well, God bless you so much. Uh, all of you that have tuned in, may the grace of God abound towards you as we join together in this fellowship once again tonight. Make the King of Kings remember you and lift you and bless you. We exalt you, our Lord Jesus Christ, for the things that you have done in our lives. I want to appreciate all of you that have joined us online. Uh, God bless you so much. We have quite a number of you. Uh, we appreciate Obari Dennis, Godwin Award, Duncan Wendwa, Rebecca Obulwa, Godwin Award, uh, Eva Jen, uh, Pastor Kimeu, uh, Kevin Obondi, Sabato Tina, and many others that have come online. The grace of God be abundant towards you this night. As we share the word of the Lord. Uh, tonight the Lord gave me a word. That I want us to share together from the book of Revelation chapter number 12. Revelation 12 verse number 7. The Bible says. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Therefore, verse 12, Therefore rejoice, O heavens, 
and you who dwell on them. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having a great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. Tonight I want to look at um, a, a teaching on the title Satanic End Time Treasonable Movement. What we are seeing happening around the globe right now, it has the signature of the evil forces behind them. And it's good for the believers, the children of the Almighty God to be aware of what we are dealing with. Because when we are not aware of the kind of warfare that we are in, we will continue blaming people and blaming things and blaming what is happening and circumstances around us without actually pointing out the actual thing that the enemy is doing behind the scenes. It is the devil who is in uh, in control of whatever is happening and because of that we need to know he is the same that organized a treason a treason is arranging to overturn a legal government or kingdom and so he wanted to rule or to take the place of God in heaven and the Bible says that Michael and his angels fought with that dragon whose name is the devil and Satan. And the Bible says he could not prevail in heaven and so he was cast down together with his fallen and evil angels. And so we see that um, there is a um, a voice that celebrated the victory that took place in heaven. Verse 12, the Bible says, Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But to those who are the inhabitants of the earth, that includes you and me, the same voice said, War to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, because the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time he knows that he has a short time as all of us are aware we are living in the last of the last days and the prophecies that were given by the prophets the apostles and by our lord jesus Christ are almost all complete and right now we are in the process of the antichrist creating his government and setting up the infrastructures and his structures for the manifestation of the antichrist we thank god that um, we believe that he will not be manifested until the church is taken out of the way in the rapture by our lord jesus christ However, we need to know that um, there are lots of things that are happening in the world today behind the scenes that the devil is instigated using men and using systems of this world to make sure that um, uh, he puts what he wants in place in preparation for his rule on earth. And so we are experiencing an intense battle raging in the spiritual realm against the church. The reason is the church is the greatest force. And I'm talking about the church of Jesus Christ that he said himself, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus is building a church 
not a denomination. He is building a church, not a religious organization. He didn't come to establish a religion. Jesus came to establish a church, an ecclesia of those who are born again, those who are called out from the world, those whom he has filled with the Holy Spirit, and he has written their names in the Lamb's Book of Life, and he has filled them with the guarantee of the Holy Spirit, which is the guarantee of our inheritance. And so he has given them power to be called the sons of God. Now this is the church I'm talking about. There is an intense battle raging in the spiritual realm against this church that I'm talking about. So what we need to know is that the church or the churches that we have various congregations that are calling upon the name of Jesus that are scattered all over the world they are embassies of the kingdom of God. They are scattered all over the world and they are divinely empowered by God to establish dominion and the influence of the kingdom within the territories of their jurisdiction. So wherever they are, we are all one body. But according to God, we are representatives of heaven. We are ambassadors of Christ. And therefore, where we meet, these places are called embassies. Because we are ambassadors. We are representing heaven here on earth. Because our citizenship is not here on earth. But our citizenship is in heaven. And because of that, we are the greatest threat to the movements of the devil. Because his intent is to overturn the government of God. He is to overturn what God is doing in this church. And therefore he is moving together with, the cohort, with his cohorts, with his agents, with his fallen angels to work against the growth and the multiplication and the strength and the power and the dominion of the church because the church has influence on the face of the earth the church is the light of the earth and because the church is the light he is the prince of darkness and therefore we disturb all that he desires to do on the face of the earth and because he knows that he has but a very short time he is doing everything right now to harass those that are born again and those that are, that are called by the name of Jesus Christ. So the true church of Jesus Christ has her command in heaven. We have our headquarters in heaven and receive command or marching orders from the throne of the chief commander who is the, uh, the, 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 uh, the Lord himself. The Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Now when Satan rebelled against God, we saw in the scripture that Michael and his angels repulsed that rebellion that he had intended in heaven. And they crushed the conspiracy and they cast the devil down from the heaven. In other words, Michael rebelled against that rebellion. He would not accept what the rebellion intended to do in heaven and God backing him and the other angels, the Bible says that he crushed that conspiracy and destroyed that uh, works of the evil one that were intending to take over the kingdom of God. Now, as we have seen, there was a voice that celebrated that. But also the same voice warned us who are on earth. He said, we need to know that that devil has come to you. You that are here on earth. And he said, woe unto you. In other words, what we expect is not an easy 
thing. It is not an easy access to anything. That's why the Bible says that from the days of John the Baptist, when Jesus Christ was introduced on the face of the earth, from those days that Jesus was introduced, the kingdom of God entered a new phase. It was a phase of reintroducing the light on the face of the earth. And therefore, the devil is not happy with it. And therefore, Jesus said, it suffers violence. It is those who are aggressive, the violent, who sees it by force. So we shouldn't assume that all is well just because you are born again. We shouldn't assume that the governments of this world are going to give you a free way to do what you want to do. You shouldn't just sit there and assume that um, uh, we will find it because God is on our side. I want you to know you are must arise. That's why we said yesterday you need to wage a good warfare. You need to fight the fight of faith. Because if you do not wage war, you are the one that will become a victim. The Bible says, war unto you who are the inhabitants of the earth. So the devil has been around for quite some time. He has been around for a long time. But as the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ draws near, he has entered into a panic mode. And so he is bringing out all his arsenal and deploying his demonic agents to execute his vengeance against the church. Not only is he using demonic agents, he's also using men who have ascribed to him. He has put all the rulers of the earth and nations on red alert to position their troops and machinery in readiness to persecute the church. Nations are busy strategizing on how to defeat the church. So when you see what is happening globally, do not think it is just a normal thing. You need to know that you have to bless yourself. As we have said before, that you need to prepare for the best but expect the worst. Because the enemy is not going to just allow us to enjoy what we have to enjoy as God is blessing us. Our heavenly father is for us. But David crying in the book of Psalms chapter 2 and verse number 1. He says, why do the nations conspire and rage? And the people plot a vain thing. The kings of the earth have set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, let us break their bond in pieces and cast away their cords from us. You see, the influence of the church is so powerful that those people who are not born again, they feel harassed. They feel frustrated. And kingdoms and kings who want to do their own thing, they know that there is the moral that is set by the church and it is convicting them or condemning them. And therefore they feel bound by feeling that we don't need these people around us. They need their freedom to do what they want to do. Because they know even just your presence, you are the light. And all evil happen in darkness. And so they say to themselves, let us break their bones in pieces. And cast away their cords from us. So the evil conspiracy against the church. And the body of Jesus Christ. Is growing day by day. It is becoming stronger. 
and stronger. And they are now, they are now taking advantage of what has been said as a disease, which we believe is not. And so they want to use that to create their strength and their, their establish their ground. And so they are making this conspiracy stronger. When Absalom, the son of David, conspired to overturn the government of his father. The Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 15 verse 10, Then Absalom, I'm sorry, I said Samuel. The Absalom sent spies throughout the tribes of Israel, saying, as soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then you shall say Absalom reigns in Hebron. And with Absalom went 200 men invited from Jerusalem and they went along innocently and did not even know. Then Absalom sent for Ahithophel the Gilonite, who was David's counselor from his city, from Gihon, Gilo, while he offered sacrifices, and the conspiracy now grew stronger, for the people with Absalom continually increased in number. You see, originally Absalom had only 200 men. But then he had to use a respectable man who was in the inner circle of David. He was a member of King David's inner circle. He was the, the chief counselor. He was the most wise man in, his, in the camp of David. It is recorded that when Ahithophel said the word, it was like the oracle of God. That's how powerful this man was. And I believe probably he fell along, he fell away with David. And because of that, he took advantage of what Absalom was doing. And Absalom called him into his camp. The moment Ahithophel came, and joined into the conspiracy. He gave him wisdom. He gave him direction. He gave him counsel. He gave. He knew the. He knew all the secrets of David. And because he knew the secrets of David, the Bible says the conspiracy grew stronger because now he had a wise counselor. I want us to know this. Those who are betraying the church worldwide today. I believe by, by the spirit of God as I was praying. That they are those who are with us but not for us. Many are those who have joined the enemy ranks. Those who have now ascribed to satanism. Those who have ascribed to Freemason. Those who have ascribed to all kinds of Illuminati. Those who have ascribed to all the company that the enemy, the devil is using. And some of them still say I'm born again. John says something so powerful in the book of 1 John chapter 2 verse 19. John says, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. And so, there are those who have betrayed and who are betraying the church across the globe because the devil has been busy recruiting even those people who have been on the forefront of preaching the gospel 
men with wisdom, knowledge, people who have known the secrets of the kingdom, who have tested the things of the kingdom of God. They are the ones that the enemy is using right now. Just like Delilah betrayed Samson, he was betrayed by somebody who was closest to, her, to him. Like Judas betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ, he was very close, he knew the secrets of Jesus Christ. And so, some of the things that Jesus said will have to come to pass because Jesus said, the enemy of a person will be a people of his own household. There is a time when they will persecute you and they will be doing it as though they are doing the will of God. So, we need to understand what is the enemy's conspiracy today. I would just give you a few as the Holy Spirit began to pinpoint them to me. Number one, the intent is to silence the prophetic voice of the church and introduce, introduce a voice of confusion amongst those who call upon the name of the Lord. Number two is to disarm and paralyze the aggress aggression of the apostolic advance against the kingdom of darkness. I repeat, number two is to disarm and paralyze the aggression of the apostolic advance against the kingdom of darkness. Number three, this conspiracy is to make sure that the shepherd's staff and the rod should be broken to pieces and thrown away so that the ministry of the pastor the ministry of the shepherd loses its relevance. Number four, that many pastors be dis displaced, dislocated, and compromised. When they push the pastors to the corner, then at the end of the day, there will be a voice of compromise. Number five, the teaching ministry, the teacher and the evangelist to be thrown out of their offices and make them bitter as they struggle to survive. Number six, to intimidate the servants of God or entice them with worldly treasures so that they pursue the cares of this world more than they are calling in God. Number seven, to let them have a form of godliness but deny the power of God. Number eight, that those who refuse to play the game that has been set before them, that they have, which they have purposed to contend against them that those people who have purposed to contend for their faith they set up people around them to scandalize them to use falsehood to display their nakedness to deface and defame them publicly and to let them be fully engaged in self-defense while their followers lose confidence in them. And they begin to murmur and complain against the servants of the Almighty God and the believers in the house. Number eight, the conspiracy is to let many people die as the church is targeted to create the platform for fear and terror. Just like in war, when you are fighting in the army, sometimes the enemy army creates a diversionary process so that 
they attract their opponents to look at what is happening as a diversionary while they are planning an ambush. And so the enemy is using this diversionary tactic against the church so that he may target the people by the time they wake up they'll be fully ambushed. That's why today the churches may open but because for, 20, for three months there has been a constant voice through media and through other mediums that has been singing in their ears day and night on the streets singing to them that this thing is real you need to be afraid of talking uh, hugging somebody you need to be afraid of greeting you need distancing you need masks you need this you don't need to invite people in your house you need i mean all these things are happening today i was just leaving my compound and i uh, on the road i i found a lady uh wailing on the road and she was saying how can a people that I have loved all this time have gone to their home and they have closed the gate and they are telling me to go back to my house because I am carrying corona. How can people say that? Yet there are people have raised. And so this lady was, was crying she, because they told her, you go back to your home and stay with your children there. We don't need visitors. So this is the story that has gone so deep into the hearts of the people. Listen, to change the character of a person, you only need to put him under a constant bombardment for only 21 days and you will brainwash him. And so what is happening today, there has been a scheme to brainwash members of the body of Jesus that even when they have to go to the home fellowships or HBCs, or HBFs or whatever home fellowship they have decided to go to they are afraid of each other because the language is this you don't know who is the next the person next to you is could be carrying it and so the fear of association is now created the fear of fellowship is now created and this is undermining the scripture the bible says do not forsake fellowshipping with one another as is the, the tradition of others. And so there is a fear of association. So I want to say this, even though the churches are opening, there are so many people who will be afraid to go to church. And this is breaking the floor of the body of Jesus Christ because it is a tactic of divide and rule. If you watch the animal kingdom, you will see when there are wild beasts in a multitude, the lions or the, 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 the cheetah or the leopard may not attack when they are in a group. So they target to separate them so that they target one person. And so when they can now identify one animal, that is a loner or that has just been separated from the flock, then they pursue that one until they kill it. This is the demonic tactic. It is a conspiracy. It is a demonic movement and a satanic prisonary movement that is intending to separate and destroy. And I came here under the action of the Holy Spirit to speak to my brethren who are listening to me do not listen to what the devil has planted in your heart you need to be bold you need to be courageous you need to know what is your cardinal right as a child of the almighty god because it is what the enemy has intended he will eventually squeeze god out of your life squeeze faith out of you he will put suspicion and fear and intimidation into your spirit and when you are highly intimidated I want you to know that is the tactic of the devil throwing now seeds of of deception in your spirit and eventually you backslide he wants to squeeze the fire 
or prayer out of you. And I pray that by the grace of God, you arise and begin to seek God like never before. Because this is a trick. It is the wicked trick to destroy your life and to destroy the kingdom of God. It is time for you to arise. So what is happening is, tactic number nine is, let as many people die as a diversionary measure. You see, in war, when people are in war, they don't mind how many people die so that they can achieve their goal. They don't care. So, so long as people are dying or they are escalating the figures, even though somebody has died of malaria, they say it is covered. If somebody dies of stomach pain, they say it was covered. If they say, if somebody dies of high blood pressure, it is COVID-19. And so that everything that is said is to increase the number. So that the whole world can say, wow, thousands of people are falling on the streets. And fear is dis uh, deposited and terror is released into the hearts of many. But the target, my friend, is not the people of the world. The target is the church. And we need to arise. We need to say no. We need to be bold. And they say to the devil, you are a deceiver from the beginning. Remember where we have read, he is a deceiver of the whole world. And so, we need to arise. So he's creating, uh, he's creating platforms for fear and the terror, but the target is the church. Number 10, the conspiracy is, the ultimate goal is to isolate those who are zealous for the Lord. Those who are radical. Those who are ready to serve the Lord to the end. Those who are holding on to salvation until the coming of the Lord Jesus. Now the ultimate goal is to persecute those ones. Listen, I had in my spirit, some of us are going to be assassinated in the name of COVID-19. So that they may blame. You go to a hospital, you, you receive some injection or some medication you die and they say he died of COVID-19 but it was just an early death, demonic assassination and this is beginning to happen that's why you go to some places you hear several priests have died to continue stirring up fear the devil is using state machinery all over the world because they are at his disposal to execute his diabolic schemes and plans. Listen, the Bible says in Proverbs 19 verse 3. It says, the foolishness of a man twists his way. The foolishness of a man twists his way. And therefore his heart will fret against the Lord. When the devil plants the spirit of foolishness or ignorance in the hearts of men all over the world it does not matter the heart of a man is the heart of a man whether he's a king whether he's a prince whether he's a president whether he's a minister whether he's a judge whether he's a police officer whether he's a whatever he is when the enemy plants the spirit of ignorance and the spirit of foolishness that heart will be twisted he will twist your heart. And by twisting your heart, he twists your life and twists your way. And because of that, that heart will begin to fret, to rise up against the Lord. So the enemy is hiding today behind a smoke screen of COVID-19 and is spewing lying words to the ears of those whose minds have been frozen by threats 
and terrifying deceptions whose hearts have been numbed and dampened by false promises of words lest by poisonous venom of the serpent of old who is the devil himself. Every promise you are hearing, every word you are hearing, they are lest with a venomous poison. It's so poisonous that once it goes into one's heart or spirit, it paralyzes them. It paralyzes them mentally, spiritually, and even it destroys their inventions. It, it destroys their ability to reason with God. Psalms 55 verse 21. Kabo Shalama Handala Masai. The Bible says, Psalms 55 verse 21. The Bible says, The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords. Some of the things that you are hearing being spoken all over the world by kings and leaders and all those people who are sending words and media. I want you to know some of these words are already poison. The words may be smooth, smoother than butter, but there is war in their hearts. The words may be softer than oil. Remember Delilah. Delilah kept on talking softly to the man of God, Samson. Huh? Delilah, speaking to Samson every day, please, darling, sweetie, I love you. Please tell me sweet words. But inside, there was war. Inside, there were drawn swords piercing to destroy a man. So the conspiracy against the Lord and his church is intended to make sure that the church is lulled to sleep. Is intended to make sure that the church is no longer cohesive. Remember, the Bible says, how beautiful it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the oil upon the head of Aaron, which went down his beards to the garments. It is like the dew on Mount Hammon, the beauty that was there. And the Bible says it is there that God commands a blessing. When people begin to suspect each other, we have broken the bond of unity. And yet this is one of the key principle and ordinance that we have to embrace. Love one another. But then suspicion eats away the love for one another. Numbers, uh, Nahum, sorry, Nahum chapter 1. Kabo Shalabakasa. Nahum chapter 1. You see, this conspiracy against the Lord and his church, we declare it will never stand. This is what the Bible says, verse 7. Nahum, verse, chapter 1, verse 7. It says, the Lord is good. A stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knows those who trust in him. But with an overflowing flood, he will make an utter end of the places that the enemy has set. He will make an utter end and darkness will pursue his enemies. This is the Lord, our God, he says he will make an utter end of what the enemy is planning. When Absalom conspired against his father, he never succeeded because he was an anointed man. Bible says 
And darkness will pursue his enemies. Verse 9 says, What do you conspire against the Lord, O evil powers? He will make an utter end of it. For affliction against you, brother, will not rise up a second time. Listen, verse 10. For while tangled like thorns, and while drunken like drunkards, they shall be devoured like stubble fully dried. Hey, as they are confused, while tangled like thorns, and while drunken like drunkards, they shall be devoured like stubble with dry, which are fully dried. Verse 11, from you comes forth one who plots evil against the Lord. A wicked counselor like, me, like, like Ahithophel. Thus says the Lord, though they are thinking they are safe, and likewise they think they are many, yet in this manner they will be cut down. When he passes through, though I have afflicted you, I will afflict you no more, my children. For now, I will break off his yoke from you. Hey, for now, I will break off his yoke from you and burst your bones apart. Listen to me, child of God. The believers must now stand in boldness as they keep on with the end time mission of winning souls for the kingdom of God. We shouldn't keep on listening to the lies that are coming from the evil forces of darkness. The spirit of the deceiver. God has says it does not matter however safe they think they are, however many they think they are, God, he says, in this manner, they will be cut down when he passes through. Why? Because he is coming forth and he is going to devour them like stubble. He is going to devour them like stubble. Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you, blessed Father. Revelation 12 verse 11, the Bible says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Listen, they did not love their lives to the death. This is what is the key. When we stand, it is you need to know in any army, any battle, when there is war, every soldier that goes to the battleground and to the front line, he goes there prepared not to come back. He goes there prepared to die because that is what is called patriotism. So in this kingdom, there has to be those who have the boldness to say, if I die, may I die, but I will defend my faith. This is where we are. This is what is happening. Because, listen, I don't know when, I don't know how, but so long as you are still alive, if Jesus tarries, the church is now being brought into a place of persecution. And it is those who will stand to the end that will be saved. And so the Bible says they overcame him, number one, by the acknowledgement of the blood of the Lamb. Number two, by them continually speaking of the testimony of their Lord Jesus Christ. It is by the word of their testimony. Do not be silenced by this conspiracy. Do not be silenced by this treasonable movement. You need to arise and continue speaking as though 
you are you have only one day to believe preach the gospel speak this word testify of the lord in season and out of season do not allow intimidation to cow you down the devil intends to make the church timid but time has come for you to arise number one in establishing a strong relationship with your heavenly father and in prayer you need to go deeper than ever before you need to seek the face of your god because this is the hour where the separation is beginning for those who love the lord and those who love him not this is the hour that the lord is asking who is on my side if you are on the side of the lord then stand and do what he has called you because the bible says that those who are for me they gather together with me those who are against me they scatter so this is the hour for us to arise and gather together with the lord jesus christ nahum chapter 1 verse 15 the, the bible says behold on the mountains the feet of him who brings good tidings who proclaims peace O Judah, keep your appointed feasts. O Judah, O child of God, keep your appointed services. Keep your appointed feasts. Perform your vows as you did from the beginning. Don't allow timidity to rest upon your mind. Continue serving God. Continue giving him. Continue. Uh, uh, keep your appointed feasts every day. Pray. Seek the Lord. Go into his house. Worship him. The Bible says for the wicked one shall no more pass through you. Listen. This is the word the Lord gave to me for you. He said for the wicked one shall no more pass through you. He is utterly cut off in Jesus' name. I say again, he is utterly cut off in Jesus' name. So you better believe the word of the Lord. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, whose report will you believe? So the Lord declares to his elect, do not be afraid of them, neither be dismayed of the, their plottings, for the Lord is with you. Isaiah 29, very quickly, the Bible says in verse 6, the Bible says you will be punished by the Lord of hosts. He is speaking to the conspiracy of wickedness. He says you will be punished by the Lord of hosts with the thunder, with earthquakes, and with great noise, with the storm and with tempest. And the flame of devouring fire. This is what is happening. God is arising. Verse 7. The Bible says the multitude of all the nations. Who fight against Ariel. Ariel means Jerusalem. The multitude of all the nations. Who fight against Jerusalem. Even all who fight against her. And her fortress. And distress her shall be as a dream of a night vision. It shall even be as when a hungry man dreams and look, he, is, he eats. But when he wakes up and his soul is still hungry and empty. Or as when a thirsty man dreams and look, he drinks, but he wakes and indeed he is faint. And his soul still craves. So the multitude of all the nations shall be who fight against Mount Zion. So their conspiracy shall suddenly cease. For the Lord shall cause confusion in their camp. Their intent will be like a marriage. As a dreamer who wakes up and realizes that it was just but a dream. Finally brethren. Psalms chapter 2. Verse number 4. The Bible says. Who sits. Who, he who sits in the heavenly 
in the heavens sorry he who sits in the heavens shall laugh at them the lord shall hold them in derision then he shall speak to them in his wrath and dis distress them in his deep dis displeasure yes i have set my king on my holy hill of zion i will declare the decree the lord has said to me you are my son today i have begotten you and he says this ask of me and i will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possessions you shall break them with a rod of iron you shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel listen to the word of the lord o child of god keep your appointed feasts remain in your work station keep doing what god has called you to do and this god will has already appointed a great reward for you because this is what he says ask of me and i will give you the nations for your inheritance i will give you the ends of the earth for your possessions may the lord bless you i believe the lord has spoken to you may this word find a place in your heart and stand strong as a child of god we are living in the last days and you need to stand as a child of god do not sing the song of the wicked sing the song of the kingdom in jesus name amen i bless you with the blessings of god and i pray that god will give you the spirit of wisdom knowledge understanding the right judgment the spirit of power and sound mind the spirit of faith that you may be able to stand to the end in the name of jesus may the hand of the almighty rest upon you and that you are an overcomer you are a conqueror you are not going to be defeated you shall not be left by the roadside you shall stand till the lord comes in jesus name amen the lord bless you we love you please let's join again tomorrow at such a time for such a word of encouragement the lord be with you together with your family please keep giving to god keep sowing your seeds keep giving that which you must give and so go to your phone right now and to the mpesa and use the pay bill number our usual pay bill number is 599058 599058 and the lord god almighty who has promised never to leave you or forsake you who has said he will scatter your enemies this god is blessing you tremendously in jesus name i declare again no weapon formed against you shall prosper in jesus name amen good night